Hey gang, Armchair Engineer 85. Uh, it's been a while since I've done an update on the 2015 Renegade XRS 800R, but uh, as you can see here, I've made quite a bit of progress. And this morning, um, it would have looked like I made even more progress because I've unfortunately had to tear some things apart and go back, which is something I absolutely hate. I mean, who would like it? And that I, you know, I've tried um, to do every step, a quality step, and think everything through so that I didn't have to do this. But guess what? Sometimes you have to do it. So anyways, um, I the last update there, I was waiting on my injectors to come back. And they did, in fact, come back. You can see I, I labeled them the PTO and the MAG. I sent them out to get uh, Hydrosonic cleaned, uh, which it cost about $200 cash, which is very cheap and should be something that everybody thinks about as part of uh, maintenance on these sleds. These are direct injectors um, because much like its owner, uh, one of these was an absolute complete failure. And uh, well, it was an absolute complete failure, but it did not pass the minimum test that it needed to uh, to do in order to pass. Um, so anyways, got them back, got them cleaned, uh, got them balanced, uh, the spray patterns checked. Uh, crush washers and seals so i'm very happy with that that's definitely you know one less thing i have to worry about um what's taken so long with this project i mean it hasn't really taken that long but what has held it up i'd, I'd be done right now if i wasn't waiting for parts um, the injectors i waited three weeks to get clean just because the gentleman he had a he had to be out of the country uh for a few weeks so anyways i waited on that and then the whole top end kit took three weeks to come in um, this project could be called Project of the Broken Plastic Nipples because when I bought this, um, you can see here, I've got a broken plastic nipple right there on the gas tank. And I did know that because the guy that I bought the sled off did tell me that. Um, but you've got here, I don't know if you guys can see it. You've got this like, um, where is it? it's hard to see. Everything's so jumbled. Back here, there's this uh, coolant manifold and it's made of plastic and it's got like, I think five or six plastic nipples um, that are, uh, I don't know if I still have the old, old one here that I could show you guys. Excuse me, I gotta, I think I threw it out. Well, there's a, there's a broken plastic nipple right there. I've tried to fix it uh, for the one manifold, but it didn't work out so great. So anyways, um, that manifold uh, had two broken plastic nipples. Uh, one I wasn't even aware of. It was underneath. Uh, the owner never told me about it. So anyways, I had to order a new manifold. That took another week to come in. And then guess what? Just this morning, I broke right here. You've got this uh, little white plastic. Um, these are your vacuum lines. And they take two lines in. And then they go two lines down here, which feed down to your bottom crankcase. And I broke that off. And the reason why I was going back to take these off was because um, my when I put my jack shaft in your um, shaft goes along here and feeds out to your chain case and when I did that I noticed that this white collector box and the um, the uh, vacuum lines were rubbing on the uh, jack shaft so obviously if I would have trail ridden this I would have had a failure at some point probably sooner rather than later. So digging in my box, um, I had this black plastic. I'll show you, it's what I'm doing right now. Like I said, everything's so buried. You can't even see it back there. Yeah, so there's this black pa plastic, plastic piece that bolts onto the side of the um, uh, cylinder heads and it basically contains uh, these and keeps them out of the way. I was unaware of that piece um, until I got way far beyond here. Uh, the build and I thought well whatever maybe I can get away maybe things won't rub well guess what it does and it's a big thing that I want to be sure of I want to make sure my vacuum lines are clear I want to sh make sure my oil lines are clear um, I know that these sleds here have a big problem uh, if these get too close to the coolant line and there are many on this sled uh, you know you got the heat here from your ignition coil and then the heat from the coolant and they'll burn off and I know for a fact because I've seen quite a few videos on YouTube, and when I bought this sled, the guy gave me a brand new, still in the package, um, ignition coil here, uh, your boots, because one did burn up. So I'm very conscientious of that. And that's where we're at right now. I'm sorry I haven't shown you guys much of you know the actual process of it, 
Uh, the reason is just because I'm under a bit of a time crunch um, with work, you know, trying to get ahead of winter and just taking my time and trying to do quality steps. And even when you do that, I mean, you still run into snags. Uh, another little update. I got uh, all new ski, well, they're used skis. These are off a 2016 Renegade XRS um, because the other ones were completely, the carbides were destroyed, the ski, the skis were destroyed, like the, there's chunks of plastic out of it. So what I went ahead and did, the livery on the 2016 was uh, yellow, gray, and black. Definitely not as nice as this McDo, but uh, the hoops here were silver and I wasn't having that. So I went ahead and I um, drilled out the rivets, which isn't hard to do. And then I just got uh, some 15, 16 bolts and uh, put them in there. And these are zinc coated so they won't rust. So I was able to do that. I needed new ski bushings anyways, cause the ones that were on it were completely, uh, one was missing and the other one was absolutely chewed up. It was done. So that was another thing. Uh, there was no handlebar guards, you know, bush bars, if you will. Uh, so this came off that same 2016 Renegade XRS, which is great. Um, and they're the exact same ones and they color match. So anyways, like I said, uh, I had the secondary clutch on this morning. Um, the chain case was done, completely installed. Uh, I had the muffler on. I had the battery box installed. Um, I'm just charging up the battery. You can see over there. So I was feeling good because uh, I thought, okay, I just got to fix that gas tank and then get some body panels here on, hook up some connectors, I'm good to go. But I, as soon as I looked in there, I saw the jack shaft and I thought, okay, I can't have that. So I had to go backwards, which is fine, because generally once you put, well, it's not fine, it sucks, but generally once you put a bunch of, um, you know, once you've done a bunch of steps, you can undo them quick because you know what size of socket or wrench you need, you know where everything goes, you know the torque specs, if there is any. So, you know, it wasn't that bad, but unfortunately these plastic pieces that BRP are using, like I, this will be the third, like I said, I had to replace this entire manifold back here with the coolant lines. Now I have to replace that. These aren't expensive. And then I have to do something about fixing that. I mean, in the, uh, in the quest to reduce weight on these sleds, the fallback has been they've used a lot more plastic which obviously is a lot more brittle. Uh, it's a lot less weight. Um, the packaging is super, super tight in here. I mean, when I look at my first gen rev here and then you work on this thing, it's like, wow, this thing is packaged tight. Or, you know, it's very smaller, which is nice. But then in, you look at the gen fives and they're even smaller than this. But I mean, that's what you get, ladies and gentlemen, working on these things is, you know, maybe not a nightmare, but not, not the greatest so anyways that's where i'm at armchair engineer 85 guys if you're into this don't miss this step get these injectors hydrosonic clean best 200 bucks you ever um you ever uh you ever spent like everybody focuses on you know oh, i'm gonna rebuild the clutches okay that's all great you know i'm gonna put new plugs in it you know that's all great too you know maybe i'll clean uh clean the rave valves the power valves or whatever that's great but this right here can make the, a huge difference in reliability and performance getting you know way uh, better uh, amount of fuel and not having a catastrophic failure and according to the guy that did um my injectors here he said that these are not a great direct injector brp kind of dropped the ball so you definitely want to do that Anyways, Armchair Engineer 85, wish me luck, fellas. I'm going to keep these updated. I'm out.